Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and two of my favorite things are coming together today, the Plex Media Server and the HD Home Run Digital Television Tuner, and that's because Plex has released a new DVR into beta today. It tightly integrates into your Plex experience, and you can uh, record live television directly into your Plex library, and all of that media works just like any other media in your Plex library, so you can play it back while you're on the road through your phone or your tablet. It works with your Xbox, your smart television, pretty much anywhere a Plex app runs, you can get access to this DVR functionality and set recordings and watch stuff. It works very well even for an early beta and we're going to put it through its paces here in just a second. But I do want to give you my usual set of disclosures. I've got two different ones to make today because Plex has provided a Plex Pass to the channel free of charge so that we can cover some of these new features as they come out. And Silicon Dust, the makers of the HD Home Run, have been an occasional sponsor here on the channel as well. But I've been a client of theirs long before they've been a client of mine because as many of you know, I've been covering the HD Home Run probably for about three or four years now. It's a, a great product that allowed me to get rid of all of my cable television hardware that I was renting and replace it with my own stuff, and it saved me a lot of money in the process. But all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and all the content you're about to see is not going to be reviewed by anyone before I post it. So let's get into how all of this works. All right, so we're going to be jumping back and forth between my personal server and one that Plex is running so we can see uh, what a fully uh, content content loaded DVR might look like. But I want to do first to show you how to set it up. So the first thing you have to do uh, is go over to a special forum post on Plex. I'll put a link to it down below in the video description because at the moment you can't download this through the regular channels. You have to go to grab the beta from their website first and install it. Uh, but once it gets installed, it will look just like your usual Plex experience. However, if you go into settings and go over to server, you're going to see a new option here for DVR beta. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go to DVR setup. Now, you need an HD home run device on your network, and you can see here that it found one already, and that's the beauty of the HD home run hardware, is that once you get it installed in your network, it's just out there and ready to be found by anything, including this. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is just click continue to get that set up, and you can see it's already pulled in my list of channels from my cable system here. I can then just click continue, and uh, we'll go ahead and type my zip code in here so that we can get uh, all of our uh, latest uh, television listings brought in. All right, that didn't take all that long, and what Plex has done in the background is gone out to a TV listing provider and uh, matched up all of my channels that my HD home run is getting to what that TV provider uh, has available in their guide. And you can see everything seems to be matching up exactly. You can remap channels if you want, but uh, everything here seems to be looking good, so I'm going to click on continue, and that will bring us to our next step, and that is pretty much it. I am done here. So we just have to wait for uh, the rest of the program guide data to be downloaded, and uh, once that's done, we can go over to our program guide. So I'm going to let this initialize and do its thing, and when it's done, we'll take a look and see what we can record. All right, we're still downloading our program guide data here, but we do have enough to get started. Now, they do not have a traditional channel grid, uh, but they organize things out by uh, the time that they may air, as well as a few other categories, which I'll show you here as we scroll down the list. So uh, we have up here starting soon, so I can look at it uh, in the grid format here and just kind of scroll through what is coming up very shortly on my uh, local cable system. So for example here, Jeopardy is starting in 26 minutes. I can also click on the title and get uh, a larger listing of what is coming on television very shortly. And if I go back out of here for a second, you'll see uh, below that uh, starting soon is on right now. So these are things that are airing as we speak. So I could start recording something immediately if I wanted to. Uh, it does not yet have the ability to watch live television. So uh, what you're going to do is set a recording for something that's on right now. And when that recording is done, you can watch it in your Plex Media Library. So there is some uh, limitations as to time shifting at the moment, but uh, you will be able to watch that recording when it's done. Again, we're in beta, so I'm sure things will change as time goes on. It also has what's coming up later tonight of some popular shows, of you know, some new episodes that are coming on. Uh, I'm a big fan of BattleBots, so maybe I want to record that. So I'll click on the record button here. That'll pull up BattleBots for me, and I can say if I want to record this episode or all episodes, I'm going to do all of them. It's going to add it to my TV shows library. You could create a second library that is uh, flagged for TV shows just for your DVR recordings, or you can integrate it with uh, whatever other TV shows you currently have in your Plex library. The choice is up to you. Uh, you can also decide whether or not you want new airings only or new and repeat heat airings. There's also some advanced settings in here too, so you can force a particular resolution. By default, it will prefer the HD version.
version, but uh, there might be times you wish to uh, change it up a little bit or prevent a low-res version from being recorded at all. And I'm thinking about things like maybe a cable channel that might be running reruns of one of your favorite shows. And if you don't want it to, to get those recordings and only HD recordings, you could uh, force it to HD here. Otherwise, it will grab uh, a unique version of anything, and again, preferring the HD version. Uh, you can also, though, have it replace a lower resolution item with a high definition item uh, when that show airs. So for example, if one of those uh, standard def uh, broadcasts happens on that cable network, if that same episode airs on an HD channel a day later, it will record that and replace the uh, low def one with a high def one. That's kind of a neat feature. Uh, you can allow partial recordings. So if it's already in progress, uh, it will start recordings. You probably want to leave that on. You can also set some padding here both before and after just in case your uh, clock is off on your computer or something. You can uh, give yourself some flexibility there. You can limit it to which channel that it records on. So again, if you have that rerun situation, you can say, I only want it to record when it's on ABC and no other channel. Uh, you can also here set how many episodes you wish to keep. So I could say maybe keep only the uh, three newest episodes or for something that's daily, maybe say, just give me the episodes from the past three days. So they have a lot of flexibility on that. And then you can also set it to delete episodes after you've watched them if you don't want to manage that yourself. Uh, so lots of good stuff that you can drill down in here for as you're uh, looking at things. Uh, what's also nice is that they've integrated a lot of the uh, Plex interface into your recording sessions here too. So if I go over to, let's say, uh, Wheel of Fortune, uh, I can see uh, you know, my usual set of data that you would typically see on a Plex listing here, and I can even set it to record from within that uh, drill down there. So that is a pretty cool feature there. Uh, what also I like about this is that it looks at what's on your library and uh, will let you know when a that show is going to be broadcasting on a channel. So I have a, a bunch of Mr. Robot episodes inside my Plex library right now, and it's looked at that. It knows that I'm into Mr. Robot, and it's suggesting here when to uh, record an upcoming episode of that. Uh, same here with Fear the Walking Dead and Halt and Catch Fire. So it's also smart enough to know what you like and what you have already in your library and go out and look for when uh, those episodes might be airing on television so you don't miss anything. It also has things broken out by category here. So we have a bunch of upcoming movies that are coming on different channels as well as sports and news and uh, I'm sure there'll be other things coming up down the road too. Now they've also integrated search into this also. So you have a unified search for both your media and things that might be showing up on television. So if I type in uh, Star Trek up here, uh, what it will do is look at my own library. So I've got my Star Trek Into Darkness movie here, and then it's going to search the program guide for things coming up on air. And it actually found something that I'm very interested in here, Leonard Nimoy's Star Trek Memories. I'm gonna click on this, and it's an interview with Leonard Nimoy about being on Star Trek. That really looks cool to me. So I'm going to set that to record. I don't want to miss that. And we'll have it um, record this single episode. This is a one-shot deal here. And I'll click on record and get that uh, going for future watching. So that is a, a really cool feature there. Now they also have a nice task list set up on the system here too. I'm going to pop over to the uh, Plex beta server because they set up a lot of recordings on that one. So uh, if you click on, over here to recording schedule, it will tell you everything that it has coming up to record. Now one of the limitations you run into when you have a, a digital television tuner is that you can only tune so many things at a time. So uh, for example, my HD Home Run Prime that I use here uh, can only watch or record three things at once. So if you have a fourth thing added to the mix, you have to decide what the priority is going to be with that. So if we switch over to this list of upcoming recordings here, you can see what the folks at Plex had recorded or programmed their uh, DVR to record. And on the side here, there's an option for something called recording priority. And what this will do uh, is give certain shows a higher priority than another. So if you have a conflict, uh, the show that you want to watch will always be top of mind for the system here. So for example, BattleBots is down here at the bottom. I never want to miss an episode of BattleBots. So I'm going to move that up to the top. So what will happen is, is that if there are, you know, let's say five things scheduled to record and there's only one tuner available, it will choose BattleBots over those other four things. You definitely want to keep an eye on that to make sure that your favorite show is always at the top of the list because if there is a conflict, you have to decide how those get settled and that priority list is a great way to do it. Now they've also integrated some conflict management into their recording dialogues here too. So right now I've got three things recording. If I try to add a fourth thing to the mix here and click record, it's going to pull up a dialogue to say, hey, you've got a conflict here with two recordings. What do you want to do? So I can cancel this recording. I could tell it, tell it that I want to prefer this recording, or I can click on manage and go back over to our uh, master list here that you saw before and set that priority over here. And on the uh, master list of things, it'll also let you know what upcoming recordings are having conflicts 
so you can decide how to resolve those. Now, playback is just like any piece of media that you might have in your current Plex library. And as you saw earlier when we set things up, we uh, added it to our regular TV shows library. Now, I'm still connected to the Plex beta server because they have a bunch of stuff already recorded. Uh, and as you can see here, they have BattleBots, one of my favorite shows in there. So I'm just going to click on that. Again, it looks just like it might look right now if you have this show on your Plex server already from another source. And uh, you can see here we get the description of the show. We have uh, the little background image there. I can go into the episode here and uh, just start playing it back. I'm going to put it on a different screen though so we don't get dinged for copyright. Now this is streaming over the internet from a remote Plex server. This is running at uh, Plex headquarters right now. So it's going to take a second for it to spin up because they do have to begin that real time transcoding process to get this file uh, over the internet. But I'm getting a nice smooth 60 frames per second playback once it starts up. Uh, really looks good. It comes up relatively quickly considering we are uh, remote on this one. Uh, locally on your network, it'll play back as fast as you would experience it normally with any other Plex media. I do want to talk a bit about uh, transcoding because that's often a topic of discussion here when we talk about Plex. Now, if you're not familiar with transcoding, uh, we're doing it right now to play back this movie because uh, this file is really large and you normally wouldn't be able to fit this uh, on, an, on a typical internet connection given how large these recordings tend to be. Uh, but because uh, Plex has the ability to uh, make the file smaller in real time, uh, we're able to get this done. The problem is that you need a pretty beefy server to make that happen. So uh, it's still going to be something I'm going to recommend you run on a regular computer. I've got an old i7 laptop that uh, acts as my Plex server just so you can get that process rolling. But there are some options that you have from HD Home Run uh, if you want to run it on a lower powered machine and still be able to get usable media. So what I'm going to do here is just uh, back out of my uh, playback here and go to the uh, settings screen here. So let's go back to our full screen, uh, click on settings. And when we go down to our DVR option here, uh, you can see this HD Home Run Extend uh, is what they're using there. Now this is one of the uh, over-the-air tuners from Silicon Dust. And they have two versions. They have the Extend and there's also one called the Connect. Now the Extend has a built-in transcoder. It's got actual hardware that converts the really large MPEG-2 file that it's recording uh, to something smaller like MP4 that uh, you could play back on your phone without needing to have the Plex server do any transcoding. So if we go into the uh, settings here for the HD Home Run Extend, uh, you'll see there's a transcoding option where we can uh, set this to uh, different types of quality on the fly. Now this is going to impact your recording quality, but uh, the highest quality MP4 uh, might be well enough to play back on your phone without any need for transcoding, or you could go down to 540p or something depending on uh, how fast your remote connection is. So you can actually get this uh, video transcoded on the fly uh, through the HD Home Run hardware. Unfortunately, their cable tuner, which is what I'm using, uh, does not have that available. So if I go over to uh, my settings here, it's going to look slightly different, but I want you to see the differences here. So I'll go over to DVR, and you can see here I have the HD Home Run Prime, and if I go over to uh, device settings, uh, I can have my computer do the transcoding, uh, which will convert that MPEG-2 file to an MP4, but I don't have as many options because uh, that hardware uh, encoder on the Extend will do a little more than perhaps Plex built-in transcoder can do, but uh, you do have the option to make those files smaller. But again, you're going to need a pretty fast computer for playback if you are going to transcode on the fly. So that is the new Plex DVR beta, and I am sure there will be more to see with this over time, so I'm sure we'll be doing additional videos on it. Uh, one thing that wasn't working yet at the time that I'm recording this video is setting up recordings from a mobile device or an app. So at the moment, it is a web browser only, but it does let you set up those things remotely. So you saw that we were logged into a uh, Plex server on the uh, Plex HQ's uh, systems, and I was able to set recordings up from here on my desk. So you will be able to do that via a web browser or just not via an app just yet, but all the playback will work because again, those media files just get integrated into your existing Plex library and are treated uh, just like anything else. It does not yet work with protected content. This is an ongoing problem with the cable industry. Uh, so hopefully at some point that will be the case, but right now it doesn't. If you are recording over the air, that won't be a problem for you, but uh, those of us who record via cable might run into a few gotchas here or there. Some cable systems encrypt everything. Uh, mine thankfully just does HBO and some of the pay channels 
channel. So you need to keep that in mind before you make a hardware investment. You may want to check with other uh, HD home run users in your area to make sure that you're able to uh, use it with your existing cable system. But again, over the air uh, should be fine. Uh, there's no commercial skip. I'm, no, I'm sure a lot of you are asking about that. Uh, no commercial skip. And again, no way to watch live TV directly with this, but there are plugins for the HD home run that will let you watch live television through Plex. I've covered one of those or two of those in the past, uh, which you can see down below in my master playlist. That's going to do it for now. Please ask me some questions. Maybe we'll do a follow-up in a couple of days and cover anything that I might have missed here. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.